So here's a simulation I put together in Unity that demonstrates the filtering of a noisy orientation. So the red object at the top there is undergoing random rotations. The green object has the same orientation but with some noise added to it to make it shake. And then the blue object is a filtered version of the green object. And we can play with a filtering parameter here. We can give more weight to the uh, green's current orientation, which makes the blue one shake more. Or we can tell the filter to give more weight to the previous orientation that it had, in which case we see that the blue now is, uh, uh, its, its motion is much smoother, but it's also lagging visibly behind the red one. So in the rest of this video, I'll explain uh, why I did this and how I did this in Unity. So we have a research project where we are recovering the 3D pose, that's to say the 3D position and 3D orientation of some fiducial markers that are going to be put on uh, physical objects. And we did this using OpenCV and Aruco. And by the way, if uh, you're interested in learning how to use Aruco, uh, there's an excellent video tutorial on YouTube which explains how to download the source code for OpenCV and Aruco and some other libraries, how to compile this code in Visual Studio, and how to write some C++ code to actually uh, calibrate a camera and find out the 3D pose of a fiducial or uh, multiple fiducials. And uh, Aruco is a nice library to use because uh, it's free, it's open source, and uh, it can be used with uh, fisheye cameras. It can correct for the uh, the sort of nonlinear deformation introduced by fisheye camera. So in our research project, uh, we are recovering uh, 3D pose, and we noticed uh, that in some conditions there is noise in the orientation. So from one frame to the next, we see the orientation is sort of jittering or shaking. And so I suggested to my, my collaborator that we could filter this orientation. And I wanted to show him exactly what the effect of this would be and uh, allow us to fine-tune the algorithm used for the filtering. And I was uh, rather pleased to discover that this was pretty easy to simulate in Unity and to demonstrate visually. And it got me thinking that maybe Unity could be used for other kinds of simulations, uh, like in the classroom, to demonstrate algorithms and techniques to students. So, uh, I made a 3D scene with uh, these three objects. I gave them each a name in the hierarchy view here. Uh, I also have a single empty a game object here to which I attached a script and I can show you the source code for the script which is less than 100 lines and you can see I declare the three objects um, now if I had made these public then in unity when when the when this object is selected what we would see are three fields here and uh, those would correspond to the three references in the source code. And, and then what we could do is drag and drop these things into those fields, and that, was, that would cause those references in the code to be initialized. But uh, that's not what I did. What I did is uh, something else. What I do is I initialize the references in the start method of the script. So uh, in the start method, I provide the names of the objects. These are the names that I uh, gave in the hierarchy view, and that uh, initializes the references to the objects. And then in the update method, which is called once for every frame, there are three steps. So the first step will update the orientation of the first object, the red object. And it does this by looking at the time, checking if we are in an odd second. So are we in the first or the third or the fifth second and so on. And if we are, then we want to apply a small rotation to the red object. That's done with this line of code. And the axis of orientation is chosen at random at the start of every odd second. Okay, and then the second step of the code uh, establishes the orientation of the second object. So the second, uh, second object's orientation is first set to be equal to the first object's orientation. And then we choose another random axis of rotation and apply a small rotation uh, to the second object. And this, this is what adds a little bit of noise uh, in each frame. Then for the third object, this is where the filter is implemented. And this is the last part of the code. So what's happening is we're, we're computing a weighted sum here. We take the forward and right vectors of the second object. So these are the ones that have had a, a little bit of noise added to them. And we also take the previous forward and right vectors associated with the third object. We add these together using this weight parameter. 
and that gives us these two vectors. Now these two vectors are not guaranteed to be perpendicular. Uh, they should be approximately perpendicular. Uh, and then I compute an up vector by using a cross product of those two vectors. And uh, of course, the up vector is supposed to be perpendicular to each of these. In particular, it's perpendicular to the forward vector. So now I have these two perpendicular vectors, which are computed using a weighted sum of the second object's orientation and the third object's previous frame's orientation. Okay, so with these two vectors, I have enough information now uh, to compute the, uh, to, to, to set the orientation of the third object. Now this comment here shouldn't be here. This is about some, some code that was deleted. And that's about it. So, uh, so uh, here's the simulation again. And if we put the weight too high, you can see that the, the blue object starts to shake more and more because we're putting too much weight on the uh, green object's current, current orientation. If we put the weight too low, then uh, we have the opposite problem, that the blue object is lagging too much behind the red object's orientation. And in this particular, particular simulation with the frame rate we have and the, the numbers we happen to have, it seems like a good weight would be around 0.1. But this seems to be a filter that works nicely because we don't need to remember much information about the past. We don't need to remember n different uh, orientations from the past. It can be computed quickly. And this took me about 45 minutes to put it together with the 3D scene and the code. And it got me thinking that maybe Unity could be used for other sort of visual experiments or lessons in a classroom to demonstrate techniques and algorithms to students.